Hello and welcome to this podcast extra. Woo. I am Steve. I am Daryl. And I am Ian. And we're doing this as a simultaneous podcast and video podcast. So if you're listening, you can go over to our YouTube channel. Um, I guess it's just youtube.com forward slash everybody dice. I'm glad we're prepared enough. Yeah, I'm not yeah. Really sure. otherwise we're, we're you can, that prepared. You can go to www.everybodydice.com and there are links to the YouTube page There's on there. Links. Yes. Um, okay. So we are doing this as an extra now that we're back from the UK Expo. It is Sunday today, so we haven't done the last day of the Expo. No. We've had time to come home and sleep in our own beds without Daryl. Yes. Uh, I, for one, will say that was refreshing. Um, I sleeping it. in the bed with us. Without you. Without us. Having a bed to myself without two <laughs> big, strong, burly men next to me. Uh, if you it haven't seen it, different. links in the description. <laughs> There's some very annoyed sentences from me. <laughs> We're all very tired, yes. but also very warm. Yeah, but but we... one person. We also very much want to talk about the expo whilst it's fresh in our minds. Yes. So, uh, okay. Um, I have my camera, which has all our reference points on it. So, what did you guys think of it in general? I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I would say it suffers a little bit from what all cons seem to be suffering at the moment. There's almost too much selling sometimes. Yeah, I would prefer more demos, developers, and, yes. and companies showing off their wares and teaching you their wares and making us aware of it is more so than online retailers using it as a place to peddle. It, but saying that, there was actually a Comic Con going on next door as well, mm. and the UK Games Expo, uh, in terms of how many developers they had there and stuff like that, it was far better. Oh, yeah, yeah. far, far oh, 100%. better. 100%. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not yeah. doubting that. I just think it was a bit. The, the issue was you, you found you were walking past people with their own stuff and then kind of missing it to your shop and go, oh, they got that. Then you see someone else and there was a couple of things we missed a few times. Yes. Purely because you were overshadowed by these huge stalls of merch, which is but, yeah, there not are a bad few thing. things. It sounds hypocritical because there's stalls like, say, Chaos Cards. Yes. Everyone knows who Chaos Cards are. Mm. Yep. Do we need to, I mean, one or two big game stalls where you can, set, you can buy the games you're playing with? Well, I'd rather the developers bring a stock of games and you play it and buy it directly off. A couple Interestingly did, but enough, not a lot did. That's the only problem, I think. Interestingly enough, we saw our friends from entoyment.com. Yeah, I would go over yeah. and check them out if you can. Uh, yeah. Very nice people. Um, they were saying they didn't have a stall this year because they mm. just feel like there are too many vendors there already. Yeah, so that's the thing. I, I agree with them. I don't mind there being vendors. Of course no. there's got to be vendors. I, yeah. love, I love to buy stuff there. Mm. Yeah. But... Did, I think did we need to have so many carbon copies of each other? I it think you know, really. you were finding that you'd look at one game, alright, say so let's take out a rim, out a rim's fresh, it only came out maybe what, Friday, Thursday? Yes. Uh, and it was everywhere, absolutely everywhere. And I don't mind that, but the issue I had was it being £45 one place, 60 something one pounds another place, another place saying they've got it for 58 with 10% off, and it was just like, yeah. after a while you kind of go, well how many copies of Our Rim does actually need to be in one place? I, I think yeah. it's interesting as well that there was one store who, when we walked past it at half nine in the morning, was selling it at 45 quid, we walked past it, I think the day after, or maybe it was mm. later that day, and it had gone up to 50. Just to match and the price they wanted. It seemed they'd gone, oh well we're, we're the cheapest, um, maybe, maybe we should increase our price. But it's not it a good was really Cheeky. Yeah. Mm. Can I start off by saying though that on the whole the majority of the people that were there to kind of like teach you and demo games and stuff like oh, that were very good. very very good. Oh yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. I Excellent. mean uh, standing out in our mind straight away is Hank who taught us how to play uh, Catacombs. The winner of I would say all of our uh, choices. Our, our hearts. Winner yeah. of our hearts. Yeah, so you, we've already given Hank props haven't we? Yeah but we we, we have but more props. I feel like we more should props. on this one as more well. Props. More so, props. More props. Let's bring that over there. If you are listening on our SoundCloud account, we have our YouTube video where we may throw up our purchases here and there. So Catacombs isn't a new game. It's just finished its Kickstarter and is taking late, late pledges now. Flip it, flip it, flip it. <laughs> but it's a dexterity game uh, yeah. that I kind of have seen before, so I let Daryl and Ian play it. And we absolutely had a fantastic great. time doing so. I yeah. was a chicken. Yep. Uh, what's his name? It was Roussan. Roussan, I think, was his name. Uh, French chicken, I believe. The best kind. Yes. Uh, but 
man, this game, it's quite hard to come by. Uh, it keeps popping up on Kickstarter. It did used to be in retail, but uh, I would thoroughly recommend checking out the uh, Late Pledge Manager mm. for it at the moment. Um, absolutely brilliant. I think it's hard to call it. It's hard to call it the game of the expo, the, or our it's game not, of the expo because it's, it's not a new enough. game. To, to, no, but I think we were game so taken aback by it. It was so good, and like the thing is, it had such an interesting. I kind of likened it to a almost better Munchkin. Like it had aspects of kind of dungeon crawling and bo uh, boss fighting and that kind of stuff, but with a uh, the dexterity thing, which I found fantastic. With like, a good actual system behind it. Yeah, I mean, I know you, yeah, I know you, you were not very fond of it, but I mean, I found it just fantastic. I mean, for instance, I took the wizard character and he had, um, his, some of his weapons were like fireballs and missiles and stuff like that. So essentially what it was was tiny little uh, tokens uh, on like a kind of shuffleboard type thing and you would just flick them into the enemies. Uh, what, I didn't even care, I wasn't even salty, I found it extremely funny that I barely tapped them and they barely kind of went <laughs> I think to that's the, the edge and that was just the fun of it. It's a funny game. I know. Yeah, I think it, it's I not say a, it suffers from a good sense of humour. I mean, it, it it does well out of comedy. You can't take it too seriously. No. And why would you? Because yeah. you're, you're flicking things across And you're a chicken a fighting a zombie or like a yeah, cube. I chicken hard. Yeah, yes, yeah. you did. Like, yeah. and all the characters seem to work. They have their own special abilities, their own special things. And they're just fun. It's just fun, silly little cartoons, and I'm always a sucker for small cartoon things. So I think the art style's really nice. Yeah, you were saying before is. that the old art So like, from the more first serious, edition, yeah. it was a very dark, kind of more serious tone, and this is cartoony, it's bright, it looks fantastic. Uh, if you are looking to get on board on the Kickstarter that's just been on, and uh, apply a late pledge, they are now doing neoprene mats for it, which is not in this version that I've got here. Uh, looks wonderful. Uh, I just wanted a copy right now. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, That's fair. I mean, yeah, I know. I'm really looking forward to playing it again and doing a whole campaign. Yeah, I'd love to go to the boss. Taking on a boss as a chicken. Yeah. yeah. So I take it this is one game where you wouldn't want to play as the bad guy. You're too invested in your chicken. I'm so invested in the chicken. <laughs> like I, I identify as a chicken. <laughs> Uh, that's brilliant. Anyway, <laughs> we kind of I skipped did, ahead a little I bit. I did core at some people. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just for reference, completely unrelated, but we were trying to find a table in order to have a look through some of our wares, and um, <laughs> they were moving, and they looked like they were in the process of moving, and we all kind of spotted it and sort of went, "Oh, look, that table there. That's good." Okay. To which point, Ian, rather than make any kind of, "Oh, hi guys, are you actually going?" Just Sort of descended on them and well, decoring noises. No, no was... I, I introduced. I, I came over. You myself. called first. No, I didn't. Then you started talking to him. No, no, no. Again. He made a. He made a comment about vulturing over their table. Hi. Like that. We're going to we're going to vulture your table if that's all right. And they went, yeah, sure. We're just moving on. And then stared at me. And there was an awkward silence. So I went, <laughs> which alienated them somewhat. He's lying. He literally called no. at them. You witnessed well, it, no, right? No, 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 he did core at them, he but he them <laughs> out any pause. He was coring <laughs> out. <laughs> I would apologise, but I'm not actually sorry. So, <laughs> it was I'm an awkward really, situation. really glad I did. Hilariously awkward. Okay, we did skip ahead of it by talking about Catacombs straight away, but I think we were all just excited about that. Yeah, game. it was probably like our Catacombs. third game, I think, wasn't it? Probably? It was something like that, but the yeah. very first game, of course my camera would turn itself off at this bit, Rumble was uh, Robot Rumble. Oh, yeah. Which was an interesting little game. Neat little game, yeah. Neat. I so, thought it was a really nice little time killer game. But it, it wouldn't take you long. It was mm -hmm. nice to play. It was an opener, basically. Yeah. Super, I, I played it and I really enjoyed it and walked away thinking, that was really good. Yeah. And then it was only later you told me what the price point was and it embedded a couple of concerns. It is a little expensive for what it is. Yeah. Um, so what the game actually is, is you've got a grid, a uh, 4 by 4 grid of tiles mm. and each tile has kind of like a room pattern on it so you've got walls that you can use as cover. Yeah, so there, it's 4x4 like four four of tiles and the tiles are no, uh, it's 3x3. Three three. Sorry? The tiles are 3x3. Three three. It's 4x4. Four four. Oh, is it 4? It is 4x4. Four four. Uh, and it's 2x2. Two two. The, yeah, the little tiles Oh sorry, are two the little two. tiles are 2x2, two yeah. two, yes. Um, so the idea is that on your turn, you have to turn the tile that you're currently occupying 
you then move onto another tile. You can't stay on the tile that you're on, mm. and then you have to turn another tile that is not occupied by any other player. Yeah. Uh, well, sorry, including yourself as well. Uh, the idea is, is if you have line of sight to anyone at any point during your turn, you shoot them and you score a point. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's the first three you hit points. them regardless. If it's your turn and you draw line of sight on someone, then you take them out. Yeah, I mean, one more caveat is uh, that when you move to a spot, you put a token down, and then no one else can go to that spot. Essentially, again. it's like a, a hole, isn't it? it, it yeah. up and, almost yeah. gives the game its own time limit. Because eventually there'll be no spots you can stand on. Weirdly, yes. though, in the entire game, there was one entire circle. Oh, well, there was one little square that no one put a movement onto. Yeah, which was really weird. Out of all of them, they all started getting a bit crowded, but it was just one tile that no one touched. I think it was really weird. It was kind of like it was a centre tile that didn't have very much yeah, cover on it. Yeah, it was just so weird. No one wanted to move on to it. I think there was a reason why there this was tile had no one on it. I it's think. Kind yeah. of weird. It's yeah. Um, it, it was really good fun. I just fit, I, was it twenty five pounds. It was twenty five pounds. Mm, I think twenty five pounds. But the figures were were cool, but maybe not twenty five quid's worth. The the board was a cardboard board, which again works. But is it twenty five quid's worth? The walls are marked on on the art rather than having actual walls. So. Yeah, which was weird thing about it was the actual box art on the front suggested that there was physical walls. I know it was obviously box art, but it, it seemed like it would have done really well if it had maybe. Either a three D structure to it, or um, like you can almost clip in cardboard yeah. to it, which yeah. would be quite yeah. nice. I, I think we're focusing quite heavy on the negatives of the game. It was a great I, game. I think the, the game was really fun. Yeah. It was a nice, it was. easy little game. It takes with, like 10, 15 minutes to play, yeah, if that. 30, 30 seconds to learn, and I imagine a lot longer to master. Yes. Yeah. It, is, it is very good fun to play, and uh, the, the dev was very kind to me by not rinsing me immediately when I made a mistake. <laughs> and then I reciprocated yeah. later on, but yeah, it was, it was fun. It was good. Okay, it was at that point we actually played Catacombs. Catacombs was our second game we played. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and then we moved on to okay. So uh, when we did our Summoners Isle review, uh, the developer of the game, uh, Robbie Munn, very kindly retweeted it and has talked to us a little bit about it. We got to meet him there. Yeah, he was a lovely, very guy. very nice guy. Very nice guy. Um, I would say by all means go and buy a copy of Summoner's Isle if you can because he's such a nice guy the game's really really good uh, if you're looking at getting friends into kind of like war games and stuff like that it's ideal but he had a new game that he was demoing called well, I was very excited about yep Sumo Gnomes yeah. and again you guys played it so if you'd like to explain so unfortunately I think we got there a bit late he didn't have any of the um, copies for sale I remember seeing on his Twitter he said he had a couple of copies for sale, but um, basically he bought a special kind of like travel, no, not even travel, uh, like show edition, which was um, a bigger version of the actual game. And what it is is kind of like another grid sort of system, and you've got these kind of dice that are gnomes, uh, really, really cool. And then you have your own sort of was it four dice. You got four dice, four and dice, yeah. they determine what you can do in your turn. So you kind of. You roll, roll for, for you keep two yeah, and do two. those moves, and then you bank the other two. You can come back to them later. Your next turn, you roll the two that you used. We can kind of swap in and out yeah. from the banking, and it was it was just a fun game. It had like maybe various different sort of uh, moves you could do, and we, we spent ages just kind of trying to get each other to the end, sort of grappling, grappling each, each other. other. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. And, and then you, you won by basically grappling me and you could spin me I, out of the ring. I didn't realise I'd won. No, it was he, crazy. He popped over and went, uh, <laughs> just throw him out the ring. You've won, just chuck him out. But again, one of those games, I imagine really easy to, it's really easy to learn the rules, but I think moves you to, to really get involved in it, it's going to be something that takes a bit of time Yeah, a nice master. sort of strategy yeah. and kind of, it's good. But I thought, I thought it was really fun. I actually, I think yeah, it's a shame that the show copy is a show copy because I really like yeah. the show Bigger copy. Version so it's got like a yeah. tree trunk with the, the thing on, so it looks like a ring. Yeah. Uh, but like obviously the the one that's being released isn't it's that a, like, like a, a cardboard, yeah. cardboard smaller one. Yeah. Cardboard smaller one, the small like normal dice. But to be honest, we'll be releasing all our photos onto our Instagram account eventually. Yeah. So by all means, go and check out our Instagram account at um, Everybody Dice Show. I would not be surprised if I'm assuming he's getting a lot of good feedback for that game. I would not be surprised if at some point down the line people have all kind of said the show one is would be a nice addition yeah so I, I, I would pay extra for the show yeah one, so personally. he did actually mention to us that it's coming to Kickstarter soon yeah uh, I think he said it was it was either late June or early July I think it was mm. he said it would be going on there so uh, I would say if you can go to peculiarity games on Twitter and 
keep an eye on that because mm. it looks like a really really good one one last thing that I really appreciate um, again the copies he was making to show he, to sell stuff he couldn't actually but I um, when I was looking on his Twitter he actually was hand making the dice himself which is really nice. Wow, I did not yeah, realise so that. That's if you go amazing. on his Twitter, cool. the ones he was bringing to sell, the sort of demo copies, the smaller dice, he was actually hand making them. So he, was, he had the dice and he was hand printing whatever the symbols were on top. That's yeah. really cool. And it was just a really nice thing. And he said he was trying to get as many as possible just so he could kind of uh, bring maybe, I don't know, say 20 copies just to sort of sell them to people that were really, really interested. That was just a bit yeah. of a shame we kind of missed that. But The thing is, is we didn't get there too much too too late didn't no, we uh, we no. went this was on the friday so uh it was probably maybe an hour and a half into the probably a show i think probably was it before we went for lunch it was before we it went was, for lunch yeah. it was just before Rough, and we went roughly just at midday, midday then, yeah. so we got in there at what half, half nine? nine so mm. probably about 11 ish just yeah, after so it probably 11. was about an hour and a half in and he'd already sold his copies that he had yeah, so. i imagine there was a lot of people following it because it's a really it was a no, it's a lovely little game mm. yeah like, that's the thing i think it, the theme of it is just incredible the artwork and the aesthetics yeah. Yeah. i really Fantastic. like the artwork yeah. it. yeah, really so cool. just to, yeah. again we'll go off quickly but the fact that i loved about it was the, the actual uh, gnomes themselves you had a top view a left view and like yes. a right view and each They're one like was a dice of, yeah it's so good you've got like the album really so nice Anyway, um, next we went and played uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Oh yeah, that was yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, this was anyway. probably the first big game that we gave a try, yeah. and we couldn't play for an entire game of it, uh, understandably as well, because it's story uh, driven. It's a very very story driven game. We made it kind of difficult to teach on the flight and yeah, expo. It did because uh, as you can imagine, at any kind of expo, it's quite loud. Obviously, there's a lot of people there. Um, the guy that was teaching us was kind of struggling to read the story elements of the game to us. It wasn't necessarily that he taught it badly. No, no it's, it's just that it was different. It was, yeah, to it be was, able to teach something that vast and yeah. story driven. Yes, exactly. Um, the game itself seemed okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I don't think it was a bad game. It's I just, think it seems like a game that's going to be heavily relying on the theme i think if they've made their own ip for it it might not do as well but because yeah. it's big trouble in little china everyone loves that everyone and loves big trouble in little china i think the other thing just to clarify as well this isn't the legendary card driven big trouble in little china game this is actually a board game with mm. miniatures mm. um it's kind of like you move across the board you move across to a location you gain a quest uh it has tests and things like that that you have to pass and different it can kind of like branch out the story in different directions depending on what you do yeah, i think there was like side missions and different things wasn't there yeah we're very much playing a streamlined version mm, of the game yeah just and two rounds the basically. combat was very difficult as well yeah uh, yeah it was, so it was challenging even against the tap opposition but i mean yeah he did say something about leveling up yeah so, so I feel you like have like a chi meter so yeah. when your chi meter fills up you take an ability card so you have more you can do at that point mm. Um, I think it seems interesting, and the big pot put off for me, and this is the second time this has come up today, was the price point yeah, again. This was a hefty so price. Expensive. It retails at £100 for the base game, and the bit that's newly just been released is the Legend of Low Pan expansion, which is yeah. another £40. Uh, we were playing with just the base game. So we weren't playing with any of the expansions. You got a stuff. lot with the base game, but I still wouldn't say it was £100. Here's, worth here's the thing is... You compare that as a miniatures game, because it is a miniatures game, yeah, exactly. yeah. to something like Zombicide. Zombicide, you get a hell of a lot of figures in. Uh, you get what I will say was a better quality board and pieces to it. Not necessarily the miniatures, but the actual cardboard pieces and things like that, I feel, is a better quality in Zombicide. And Zombicide retails at £70, pounds, something like that, which mm, is yeah. a hell of a lot less than the £100 they were asking for their base game. So, you know, even at the high end of things, you usually don't see Zombicide for any more than £80. I know when you're talking about things like Green Board, I think that went up to 90 or 100 yeah, probably But I still feel as if you're getting a whole lot more when you're doing that compared to what you were getting with the Big Trouble in Little yeah, China game. Yeah, I think it was nice to play a Big Trouble in Little China game. And I yes. think what's happened, actually, is that we're staying after this to watch Big Trouble in Little China. Yes, because we yeah, just really, really, really want to watch, watch it. Again. But... Yeah. I mean, it was an okay game, I just don't think I'd pay 100 quid for it. Yeah, of course. I think that's fair. Yeah, I think that's very fair. Uh, it might drop in price in 
in the future. It's a game I definitely want to play again. Yeah, I'd like to play yeah. it properly. I'd like, I'd like more... to have a proper go and yeah. get a proper judgement for it because it's not fair to judge the game based on what we could play of it. In a more enclosed an environment yeah. where we can just enjoy you the story. You can actually play the it. proper story and have some like a full-on kind of a yeah. ending and such. Okay, um, next uh, we went and played Red Alert. Not to be confused with Red Alert. <laughs> the video game, should we say. But um, <laughs> that actually, whilst we were learning to play it, and the guy was mm. teaching us, someone came over and said something. Didn't they say, like, oh, is this Red this Alert? Red Alert, like Red Alert. I like Red Alert. And he yeah. went, no, this isn't Red Alert, like Red Alert. But, oh, so this is Red Alert, but not Red Alert. Yeah. They didn't so, say it like that, I'm paraphrasing, but it's Red Alert, not Red Alert. So <laughs> this was a really, really good game. Um, it's not brand new. It's been out for a few months now, I think. Mm. But... Um, I thought the game was really good. I, yeah, enjoyed, I enjoyed the it. gameplay aspect of it, yes. What was really good about it, I feel, it's is um, everything better. that resembles Memoir 44, <laughs> which is a great game. Um, it's It looks as if it has more of a collectible element to it, so there's lots of ships you can go off and buy and add to the game. I know there are loads of expansions for Memoir 44, but... Having played Red Alert, I kind of feel like I just want to go out and buy Memoir 44. I would say that it might appeal to other people based on the theme. Yes. So obviously Memoir 44, World War II base. Yeah. Red Alert, spaceships. Like It's like almost like Star Wars Armada style combat, but and the spaceship. It's like a big capital ship fleet attack, which is cool, and it might appeal to other people. I don't think the models are of a high enough quality to justify it being a collectible miniatures game. Yeah, yeah, I can definitely see that. Um, the guy, again, the guy that taught us was fantastic. He loved it. Really he enthusiastic. Loved it. Yeah. Super enthusiastic. He wanted to show us every single element of that game. Yeah, Whenever yeah. it looked like we were skipping something, he'd say, oh, can we go back and I'll show you this. Yeah, and he just fun. He seemed like he really, he, he was really passionate about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Really, um, it was a really interesting part where we. It was a, a fun game. I just yeah. made, was it you or was it Stephen where he made us sort of do a do over so he could try yeah, and get Steve us had a, trick a, a yeah. card in his hand which could have helped him in some way. So he he dragged the game back so Steve could use it. Like nothing big had happened. It's not like he just to show yeah, us how it kind of, yeah. stuff. But yeah, it was good. But this yeah. is what you can do and what can happen. And it was nice. But I didn't catch his name. No, no I, I just thought he was wearing a like almost like a, a he racing had LED suit with LEDs like, down the yeah. side. Yeah, he was just re and glasses and really cool hair. And yeah. he called me Dan. Yeah, he that was really Dan. Dan. Yes. He asked me was it Lieutenant was. Dan or something. Yeah, like that. He, he was, was like, Lieutenant I, Steve. He remembered my name and Lieutenant Dan. Yeah, he called you Dan. I'll be Dan. Yeah. I don't mind. He can call us whatever he liked because he was great. Yeah, he was very really passionate. liked him. Loved it. Um, okay, uh, after that. I believe we have another game to show you here because I think we played Dwarf. Uh, Did what? we not play Dust? Dwarf? No. No, that was a we bit later. Okay. Yeah, so we played Dwarf and Beer Fest. Fest. This is my game of the expo. Oh, really? Above Catacombs? This is. Yeah, but, and the only reason I say that is because Catacombs isn't new. Yeah, so sure. This is the game I enjoy playing the most. It's very, very Fun. close to your heart for theme. I would say drinking beer and dwarven sort of burping. Well, okay. Would you like to? I was going to say Lord of the Rings camera. dwarven mythology, yeah. but yeah. Ooh. This is too slow. Just, just throw it in there. Hey! There we go. <laughs> oh, look at that sweet, sweet left to right. Yep. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, oh, you're spoiling them now. Let's not game modelling at its finest. <laughs> okay, so this is a push your luck game. Mm. Where basically you're trying to drink as much as possible without collapsing. Uh, the idea, I think, originally there was the element of collapsing, but it was so you didn't throw up the alcohol you've been drinking. So essentially, you had to um, either play it safe by drinking one beer or one spirit, whatever, at a time, or you could go full in, which is what we mostly did every round purely based because we just wanted to get as drunk as possible. <laughs> um, the negative of that is obviously it gets a bit harder. Um, the positive sometimes is also you get better dice to roll. Yeah. Um, so it, it kind of varies. Certain drinks can make you drunk even if you do pass them. So like heavy spirits, 
Every dwarf has his own favourite drinks. It gives you sort of extra points for that and extra dice. It's worth bearing in mind as well. This there's a real guy with six toes. Oh yeah. <laughs> so apparently his name is after one of the um, creator's friends or something with six toes. Yeah, duck six toes. It's a great game. It's it's really quite quick to pick up. Um, we had great fun. Okay, so um, it, the weird thing about this game is the fact that one person controls the round. So one yes, person controls yeah. how many cards we're going to be drawing. Um, at least when we're sober, I think. Or no, oh, no, no, no. We all we all select we, we whether we want to go cards, crazy yeah, or yeah. whether we want to take but it easy. They... But in the round, as soon as you choose, you're going to go crazy, you or whether you're going to be sensible. Up, really. You can so when you go crazy, you have to draw two cards at a time that you're going to drink. Whereas if you decide to take it easy, you're only drawing one card at least whilst you're sober. And whenever it comes around to your turn again, you can't change your mind about what you're going to do. You, you either have to keep to going crazy yeah. or you have to keep going steady. Mm. Um, you can choose to stop, but then the issue is you're trying to make as many points as possible, but sometimes you're getting some high ranking ones and it's just getting yeah. impossible. But then the person who controls the round, and only the person who's controlling the round gets to roll the dice. Yeah. And then depending on what you chose to do, you take the results of certain dice yes. yeah. in order to resolve whether you successfully drank them or not. If you fail, you turn to your drunk side. If um, you're already drunk, I think you just throw them up, don't you? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, but you lose if you basically if you fail the dice roll, you lose the drinks and therefore the points you would have gained from having mm, kept the drinks yeah. down. So once you are drunk, you want to sober up again, because then you get to score everything that was in your drink pile. Um, and then whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. Yes, yeah, so there was like three factors, wasn't there? There was people that could... Uh, oh, you get more points for burping again. Yeah, yeah so if they yeah. I think any burp on them, you have burp. And then if it was... Uh, it was like if you collect an entire suite of like wines or something, red, blue and yellow, yeah, you make you get extra thing. points for that. Um, if you had your favourite drinks... Um, yeah, it's so you can a flask as well. Yeah, you, you yeah, had a flask. flask that you yeah, could. if you got a, a flask. It. If you failed drinking, yeah. you had the option of being able to move a drink to your flask. Yes, I and think you had to give up something, didn't you, in order to do action that? cards? Maybe? Yeah, action, you got yeah, action yeah. Card. Yes. Oh, yeah. So you do have action cards that you're allowed to use at various points oh, yeah. during each so round. We missed a really stuff interesting point actually. Like, yeah. um, it says four. Yeah, round three drinks and then sort of. It's great. Yeah. So at one point you could sort of go. Someone could pull your character's favourite drink. And you can play the card that's called cool. I'll finish that. And I could take my favourite drink off of Steve and put it in my pile. And obviously it's worth double for me because it's my favourite drink. So and it yep. also changes your dice up, doesn't it, to a different pile Yeah, there's dice, think, some so. that say, like, yeah, so your favourite drink, you always get a higher dice for. So it's a push your luck game that isn't just purely based in luck, basically. No. There, there are things you can do to actually manipulate the result of these things as long as you play, play them well. It's, it's push your luck with a skill element. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it, it, I honestly think it's, it's the best game I've, I I enjoyed it a lot. They okay. had, the company that was sort of showcasing it had about sort of several different other games. My biggest regret was maybe not buying some of their smaller games. Uh, they had a very similar looking one to this, which was like Halfling Feast, which I'm assuming it looked like they just have to it's eat It's a similar and concept, do. but I know there's, um, <laughs> there are, I read some of the cards that had like bowel effects, so you could <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> let off uh, some gas. You could let off something more substantial than a gas. Yeah, that's really interesting. You could burp and stuff like that. So yeah, I know there are different effects that you could get for that as well. And I know yeah. there was one that was like rush to the outhouse as an effect on a card, mm. which yeah seems like it's got a similar style, but I don't know if it's it's definitely not identical. No, yeah. I imagine it's probably going to be a similar mechanic, but also just as fun, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. it's a shame. Yeah, they they didn't have those on demo. They didn't. They also have this like Victorian steampunk. Build a rocket, or this necromancy one. They all look yeah. like interesting small games. Again, goes back to some of our podcasts where you can just take them with you to places. Yeah, I will probably check them out though. Yeah, mm. so definitely. So them. after that, I believe at this point you guys went and played Dust. <laughs> I wasn't around for this, so no. I didn't really catch too much of it at all. It looked okay. It's but I really I'm enjoyed. Let you go for it. I really enjoyed Dust. So initially, I misunderstood some rules, mm. and I think that cost you a little bit. Daryl. Totally annihilated an entire squad of my troops because they weren't in cover with mini guns, which I don't regret in the slightest because it made for a really, really easy so game. Cool. Yeah, it got to the, like there was a point at the end where Daryl had one bloke with a bazooka hiding behind a tree, and I had an entire mech suit just blitzing away at this bush, <laughs> and yet somehow the mech suit was destroyed by the singular troop. I yeah, think it was, it was already damaged. It was, it was, it was, it was damaged. Yeah. yeah, it was. Um, 
that mech suit, basically everything in my army died really quickly, and this mech suit just turned around and just blew away Daryl's entire army. It was incredible. <laughs> was like, yes, Ludwig, MVP! But, um, no, it was really fun. It's, it seems, obviously we only played like a... It's a nice theme. It was a simple version, and felt like it worked really well as like a little skirmish game. Yeah. But I don't know whether the game is probably better equipped as a big battle game. But I, I know personally, uh, I think the theme's really cool. Um, I think there are some elements that are maybe slightly dated in today's day and age. In that, uh, I don't know, this is a personal thing, but um, it's a very heavy leaning on towards one of the factions being uh, women dressed scantily. Oh, yeah, the, which, mercenary group. Yeah, which mm. I don't know if it has a place in the theme. Maybe that's for the creators of the side. I, not I me, think but. this is one of those games where uh, if you were going to recommend it to someone, I feel like you would have to put that caveat of if the degradation of women and things like that is going to bother you, probably, well, probably not going to yeah, like this game. I mean, the, the entire part that me and Daryl played, none of that occurred. I had no. um, German soldiers, I had the American he had American yeah. soldiers, and there were mech suits, and it was really cool. And yeah. only when we started yeah. looking through the catalogue, we were like, there's an entire faction here of people in bikinis. Yeah, and it. the thing is, is it's very easy to say to someone, oh, you could play this game and just not collect any of them, but then if that person was to go out and start playing yeah. people and they turned up with these bikini-clad warriors and stuff like that, it would just... it could spoil the experience It's annoying, because I think there was, there, was some, there was a Japanese faction and I actually really like the look of some of them. But the problem is there were so few and far that, you again, you had that kind of... I mean, it was the Sailor Squad or something? It was very much like yeah, the, the Sailor, Sailor, and Sailor Academy... It just um, looked like Japanese schoolgirls with basically. swords, yeah, which yeah. was kind of a bit like. Uh, I mean, I like the fact that there was these kind of ninja samurai elements to them, but yeah, it's, it's a case sort of, of not enough. it kind of sounds as if this is a good enough game that if that doesn't bother you, by all means, get invested yeah, with to, it. To be honest, but, I'm I'm only saying it because it doesn't bother me because no. I would avoid it, and yeah, my army wouldn't look like that. My army's going to be. German mech suits and uh, Luftwaffe jetpack bazooka boys, which that's cool. It was really cool. Yeah, but at the same time, would you be the sort of person then that wouldn't mind if you turned up and someone had this army? I mean, if someone else turned up with it, I don't have to put up with that army for long because I intend to destroy it. Yeah, I mean the thing is, is I I've had a similar issue before with the Conan game. Obviously, okay. its depiction yeah. of women is not the best, but it's a good enough game that I still want to play it mm. but it's just a shame that it has this overshadowing element to it which you can't condone you can't excuse it in any way and say that the gameplay makes up for it but it's kind of one of those things of does it bother you enough that I think if, that, if you know? we were entirely moral we'd have to go on the stance and say whether it bothers us or not, we should take a stand against it. Exactly. But is that going to stop people making games like that? I, I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is we saw enough at the expo as well. Some of those uh, oh, the anime style things. games and stuff like that are like just, a, oh my god, they're just they really exploitative. New. Really, really exploitative. The main I the word one, like, gratuitous. Yes. In something. But, is it. They are very popular. And there's a market for it. A market and for to be it. fair, all the people, the people that were playing them when I walked past at one point happened to be women. At one point yeah. there was mostly women teaching it, there was mostly women playing it, so they seem to be fine with it as well. Which yeah. is, that's probably the, the I, most interesting I think thing about it. What's thought. important to say is that it, it might upset some people. Yes. Yeah, not everyone, that's the thing, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Anyway, um, Moving on. we stayed within the confines sure. of Wargaming. Yeah. Uh, the next thing we played was uh, the Song of Ice and Fire. Oh yeah, uh, tabletop game. So I, up until this point, <laughs> really, 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 really have been trying so hard to avoid this game purely based on the fact it's got a high price, but it looks ridiculously cool. Yes. After playing it again, we weren't playing a proper mission-based game or like a story-based game. We were just playing a kind of two versus one kind of thing. I'm not that fussed by it now. I think that's my issue. I think the fact that it looked really, really cool, the models are really, really nice, uh, the mechanics are, you know, the mechanics are okay, to be fair. But I just think there's some better stuff out there, which we will come across about later. Yeah. Um, 
that it just looked better. Like it just looked more interesting. It looks like it could be a bit more fun. It looks like it's got enough to kind of get you stuck into. But I don't yeah. think it's the looks that are the problem. You reckon it's mechanics? Yeah. I, when, so we played me and Steve versus Daryl. Um, and Steve had like one unit and I had a, a unit and a giant and Daryl had an, like the Night's Watch, the Night's Watch yeah. army. It felt like a mindless slog. Yes, there was a so, lot of kind of, I basically which, kept they, healing. Yeah, they, kept did, healing. they did say that there are obviously you can, rules for having like objectives and yeah, things story like that. Babes which stuff. obviously that would open up kind of opens, yeah, opens the game up a lot. Yeah. But Daryl had the tough army which was quite hard hitting expensive units which sat there and maybe we killed four of them in a turn and then he chose the thing that healed the entire squad and he had the like a, a general which healed his entire squad as well so we me and Steve could slam to combat with this giant and we're like ah oh, we killed like six guys that's like half his squad and then like he heals, back four, heals them all three. back but then doesn't do enough damage to us to really wipe us out and no. it, it, we spent a long time with just select back units, and forth, back just and forth. back and forth. So it was kind of like two immovable objects colliding with one another because both sides had ridiculous abilities that they could just keep using. Yeah, and the, the giant was so strong. Yeah, and the healing ability for the Night's Watch was ridiculous, ridiculous as well. And the problem is at that point, when you've got two immovable web objects hitting one another, the problem is is it's whichever one buckles first and it can take a while. I think we, we buckled first but we had a card in our hand that meant we got an entire squad of dead guys back. Which really, yeah. And then the whole really thing started again. Again. We reintroduced them to the art, to the game and then pushed straight back in and it, it was as it was eight turns ago. Yeah, and then it was, it was literally just after turns and turns of hit, heal, hit, heal, hit, heal that one side eventually buckled yeah. and then Weirdly one though, side started to overpower the other. The thing that was most annoying I found was uh, I had a couple of cards again towards the late end of the game. One of them was I managed to steal your leader at yeah, one point or one of the yeah. So he then became us and then he gave my troops a bit more of a kind of buff. Um, and then the other thing that was really kind of, I want to say jank, but it was kind of jank, was in true Game of Thrones style, um, Jon Snow resurrected himself from the dead. Uh, so even though they did technically win, which was a completely good win, Jon Snow resurrected on his own. <laughs> and realistically, I know it would have been annoying, but I potentially could have resurrected a couple more units and a couple more units. Yeah. And before you know it, it, it wouldn't. It have, would have gone back on. It maybe. wouldn't have won him the game. But no, it dragged yeah, it on for more turns than That's was the necessary. Yeah. I will be perfectly honest with you here. At that point, I felt a sense of relief that we finished the game. Yes. And then when it started up again, I thought, ah, oh, really? I wanted yeah. to see if you were. This was the thing, because it, um, it was a moral, a morale role, role even, that allowed you to see if it worked. I just wanted to see if it would have worked, and it did happen to work, and it kind of was, we were done anyway. But it was just one of those things we were kind of like, it had, had for a few more rounds. It had been decided for some time too. Yes. yes. There are about three, four turns, yeah. where we outnumbered Daryl 2-1 to one and had a giant. Yeah, and it was just There's no chance. And it was just because the unit was tough. And, it, and there were heals going on that kept that unit alive. And that, yeah, it was clearly a really powerful unit, but it wasn't doing any damage. No. Yeah. But you no know, damage! You know what? I'm weirdly intrigued by the game more now than I was before. Yeah. So I'm almost the opposite of Daryl, but I don't see myself getting into I, it. If I I'm ruled myself out of it because I'm not that games of frenzy. I'm just, yeah. It doesn't excite me as much as it excites the general populace. But I, don't know, I feel like I'd play it, but I don't know if I would invest in an army. I think the thing for me is I, I just feel about the game, I don't want to invest in another miniatures game, no. although my opinion on that might have changed Yeah, I uh, towards the I end of the expo, but we'll talk about that later. Rule, rule that out, because that's all I do. Yeah. <laughs> you love, you love <laughs> that miniatures. Yeah. My so, boy likes the miniatures. So that actually, uh, can I just say again, <laughs> the guy at Come On Games as well was really oh, good. Yeah, 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 to really really again, good. another person Super was really, really, really good. And he, he was going between both sides and going, letting us make choices and then go look if you really want it you've got a card in your hand right now yeah. let's actually do that so I had a card that I didn't understand in my hand at all maybe because I didn't read it maybe I was tired maybe I'm lazy probably <laughs> all of them but he was like you realise if you do that you can do this right and I went oh hey Steve I've got a card in my hand I've just realised that <laughs> we can do this and like it, he really helped uh, uh, loop the game up 
Sure. Okay. Oh, well, yeah, in like he helped it flow better. Yeah. He gave us a better. Yeah, it was really. He was really helpful. No, I think. Yeah. I think I knew something was happening <laughs> when you were really happy. I worked out your unit. That's what really kind <laughs> of. I yeah, triggered I, myself. Actually, like, there was a point where Daryl attacked our unit. And you were just like, right, cool, that's it. And, and I and I went, oh, Daryl, actually, we get minus to our armor save here, so um, take one off your roll, Steve. Yeah. But I pointed out that. With the, oh no, we we should get annihilated here. That'd be really good. And Daryl's like, what is happening? And then I was like, cool. I'm gonna play this card. This unit comes back and build at full strength. Yeah, yeah. that was that was. Uh, <laughs> I, I the more we talk about, I can imagine the game being fun, but I can also imagine the game being so frustrating. Like you were saying, we, we were stuck for I don't know how many rounds, just moving. I mean, we didn't even move. We were in one spot, and I feel like this is the point where maybe if you had different units, maybe if you had special abilities, more special abilities, or maybe you just knew the decks better, yeah. or your characters I, better, I don't maybe. I we were running off practice rules in any way, shape, or form, no. and we had our special abilities. I think it was just objectives that would yeah. have been different, and I, I don't know if that's enough for me to think no. I would want to invest a lot of money in that game. Uh, I just want to point out before we move on as well, uh, one thing which I did find quite interesting in the game was the idea of the leaders in the game, mm -hmm. where you had extra abilities that you could trigger because yes. someone who's not involved in the oh, battle yeah, the actual could moments. trigger kind of like commands and abilities to uh, yeah, to so give you a couple of extra abilities. That was a really, it was a really cool, little addition. Really cool idea. Yeah. So there's basically there's a board and there's five options of stuff like you pick a unit, it has an extra attack, or you pick a unit, it heals three wounds. Or you pick a, a an enemy unit and they take there's like a free a, movement. A, yeah, there, yeah, there's free. a free movement one. But the so leaders actually as well had their own special ability as well that were yes. triggered to make so to give them something unique. Some to them. leaders, when you use them to pick one of these special abilities, trigger their own special ability. One you could pick the ability and ignore it and have your own special ability. Yeah, it's a really it's a really cool way. It uses your whole turn. Mm. But it's a really cool way of ad adapting the game in a way that. It changes it up a bit. I, I thought that was a quite yeah, nice idea. Being able to hate heal for the sake of someone else not being able to yeah, heal. Yeah, so there was a turn so, where uh, I, just, I, I think I just made noise during <laughs> Daryl's entire turn. I just made noise at him. So, so just, just, just to put it in perspective, before that, every single turn before that, I had been taking my character who would basically, whenever he took a space, heal, and also I was taking the heal space. So I was always healing no matter what. But healing more, and at one point I got just kept doing it and doing it and doing it. And it was it was almost like one of those things was like, oh, just stop it. And then they're making all these wait, well, he's making this weird singing noise, and I'm just sort of like, oh, I'm just gonna attack. And he's like, ba -ba -do -ba -do -ba -do, whatever song you were singing, I, I and was then boom, singing a song called Kaboom, which I would recommend to nobody. <laughs> and it was just noise. It was just it appalling was noise, and I was ah, like Daryl and. I ended up just attacking and it, he it just, the hill, so. Yeah, he got so triggered by it, he attacked us, and I was like, right, Steve, take the heal, take the heal, Steve! <laughs> <laughs> he can't heal this turn! Cool. Right, uh, that was actually the end of our first day at that point. Uh, it was in terms yes, of going, going around the demo and games. We'll talk about stuff later about what we didn't play that we still like the look of. We'll save that for later. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, in the second day, we kind of didn't really play too much on the we, second day. We started off by finally getting on to Wacky Races. Uh, yeah, finally. Which uh, we'd been trying to get to play for a while, but it was a uh, very, very popular, popular very game. Popular. Yeah, I mean, it was good, but... Not game-changing. No, so the whole right. idea of the game was... Uh, on your turn, you could play a number of terrain cards. You had to play the terrain card of the type you were currently on in order to move off of it uh, onto the next one. And it's a simple, whoever gets to the end of the race first wins. Uh, Dick Dastardly is also in the race. He can never win the race, which I was a little disappointed by. Yeah, I suppose it's in theme with the car He never but, won, did he? Yeah. So I think that's okay. But if ever he got to the front, he would drop a trap on there and then move to the back. And then the first person to move onto that square with the trap on would then trigger the trap. Um, Not all traps were negative, which was interesting. It was it was never beneficial to the person who triggered the trap, but it could be positive for everyone else. Yeah, there was some aspects. So, there was that. Um, the reason why I was a little disappointed by it, because really, that's the entire game at that point. Mm. There's nothing else to it. Um, it just doesn't measure up to any other racing game. It's still good, it's just... 
Flam Rouge is better El Dorado. It's probably closest to El Dorado yeah. simply by the fact that you're playing cards that match the type rather than um, uh, Flam Rouge, which is far more strategic. Uh, you're actually playing numbered cards far closer to El Dorado, and El Dorado is just better. Yeah, I would say it's not a bad game. Don't by any means think it's it's a, family a bad game. game. It's definitely a, an easier game to yeah, like a family game. You maybe bring out a Christmas, and yeah. it's not going to be too much of a explaining yes. the rules to people because it, it is essentially just this is the like the map. There's no changing of tiles. You can put them down in any it's, order. It's such, weird, but, isn't it? Because it feels like it's almost for kids and their parents mm. and elderly as well. Yeah, because yeah. they recognise the characters and they want to play it. I mean, they, I mean yeah. most of the people that were playing the game whenever we went over, they, it was mostly elderly people yeah. mm. that were wanting to demo the game. So, like rummy cub. <laughs> yeah, that's really nice. Okay, um, after that, the next like game we got game. to to oh, demo yeah. was actually not a new game. It was an older game that we've never tried before. Yeah. A collectible card game, Light Seekers. Yes. yes. So. I quite enjoyed this. It's, do you have it, your bits we, handy? I do have our bits handy. Um, um, it's made by the same people that do the um, the, the Warhammer Champions, Champions one, but it's an older game than that. <laughs> if anything, <laughs> I am now the champions. If anything, Warhammer Champions is the game that was then based off of. The yeah, yeah. my, my concern is whenever I played Champions, it always felt like so it sounded a little bit off about it, and I couldn't really put a finger on exactly why. Maybe it was just the design, but it kind of got carried by the theme. And it was only when we played this the other day I realised this game is designed to play like this. Yeah. Warhammer Champions is almost altered to fit around yeah. it. Yeah, 100%. It feels like it, Warhammer Champions done properly with its own interesting theme. I, I yeah. really liked it. I mean, this is more based around the idea that you have one hero, and yeah, that one four. hero you're just trying to buff. And <laughs> it looks like we went hard on this. <laughs> is it worth mentioning we got ridiculously good? That at the expo, they were selling the old the last, decks. Yeah, the so last decks. I believe Awakening is a rotation of it that may be going soon. Yes. So they were selling these for ridiculously cheap. Yeah, you essentially you got all of the stock of the... Um, what was it, the starter sets, you've got a mini starter set, which uh, Ian, if I'll push that through in a second. Yeah. And then you've also got some boosters, play mats, you've got everything you needed really to start with not only yourself, with as many people as you want to try and get involved in this. It's incredible. So I will say the idea of this, um, buying oh all God, this stuff, this. is just the idea that I have no intention really of ever collecting this. No. But I kind of would like to play it Yes. Some up, so I, you know, in the future. So I kind of feel like this deal where you get all this stuff for forty pounds, which is ridiculously cheap for what you get, is yeah, it's a one and done kind of deal. Yeah, I, I mean, can't see myself ever really you, properly collecting this, but I enjoyed the, it. When we played the actual game of it, we played with the newer decks, the ones that I think have just probably been released, and you loved it I so much. I really, really it. enjoyed the theme of the deck I was playing, which is a tech deck based mm. around like robots, robot factories. It, I, I thought it was really, really cool. Yeah. And so I bought one of the new decks because I enjoyed playing that deck so much. And then I split a £40 bag with Daryl. Yeah, I mean, and I've taken all the tech it. decks out of it so that I can sort of fiddle with it. But I don't intend to buy much more. No, no I would say we because don't need I don't to. want no, to, no. but because I don't need to. Yeah. Yeah. So again, every uh, sort of starter set comes with a sort of uh, a booster pack of its own. So between, say, if you had all six of them, and the five booster packs and the other stuff, you're probably going to be able to mix and match a, a decent enough deck yourself out yeah. of all of this. But there's enough much. to be able to there's, tinker with yeah, there's, six, there's six decks and two star decks. Yeah. So you've got eight decks in total. It's a, it's a huge amount. Yeah. Like, you, you could buy a £40 bag and hook up eight people. Yeah. yeah. Really Which is almost what you were thinking. Like, I mean, everyone can have a deck to go on, everyone can play with it. It's all constructed, it all works really well. I mean, in total, we've got what? So I bought one deck, and you guys bought eight. Yeah. So we've got, we've got 17 decks, mm. and we spent 80, 90 something quid. Mm. Yeah. Which but sounds, that was sounds like three a lot. People. But we, we could hook up 17. 18, 19 odd that's, people. That's like the cost of a booster box for most collectible yeah. card games, yeah. you know? It's. It's nice artwork. The it did, themes are really quite interesting. Like it didn't even feel like it suffered from uh, Pokemon TCG syndrome, where the, the the decks you buy 
are tapped, and if you brought them to a tournament, you'd get completely rinsed. Yeah. It felt like the decks had their own... They were strong. They yeah, were they were strong. strong enough a, like, a lot of the cards we drew in our booster packs, they weren't so powerful. Was, well, I'll have to rotate that into my deck now. It just felt like more options, yeah. rather than better options. Sure. I think the interesting thing as well was, because you're, like you were saying, it's only one hero, I think the very easiest part of this is most of the decks work really well. You're probably just going to be able to swap the hero in and out of a couple of these decks and actually change that even more because yeah. the heroes have like a one game use ability on some of them and it might actually play really well with a different tech. I, I think the, the one game use was for the Warhammer Champions, but I mean. I think my the one I was playing on it only had a one game. Uh, so the, the, the hero one. I had is whenever I had a combo. Oh, you had a, a combo something, something on the field. I could use an action and do free damage to Daryl. So I had a com a action combo thing on the field, which did robots, wasn't it? Yeah, plus three damage to my attacks. Well, so when Daryl took damage, it took he took plus mm -hmm. three damage. So I was using an action to do free damage because this card was on the field, and then adding free to it. It felt so really put it in perspective. Strong. For quite a while, I kept healing to start off with. Again, a bit like the Night's Watchmen, and I got up to maybe about thirty-five, maybe thirty-four. And then suddenly, within maybe two rounds, you smash me down to like ten, and then suddenly it was five, and I'd gone. But and it was all in the fact that this yeah. combo had triggered so well. A similar thing happened when I played Steve, is that we, I played a different deck, thinking I'll try something a bit different. Um, I healed loads at the start of the game. Steve was doing small amounts of damage, but I was doing away, yeah. stupid amounts of heals through a card, and I had a card that restarted it, so I was doing more heals and more heals. Yeah. So I stayed in really high health, and then suddenly I had loads of cards in my hand, and then a card on the field which did more damage to Steve, and I just thought, oh, th this, is, this is the play. And yeah. it's something like eleven. I did like eight damage plus three on each of them, or something like that. And then I did another eleven damage to turn after and drop Steve yeah. in, in like two turns. Yeah. And it it was, but then did nothing. That that was the play. I just sort of had to live out the rest of the game from there. Yeah. So, I mean, after that, uh, I we went into the no pun included. Yes, that was very good. Uh, they. Do this really great thing if ever you're at an expo and no pun included are there and they're doing something on Victoria Par Victorian parlor games. Um, it it's fun. really really amusing. It uh, included the guys from oh, Semi Co op that do an online comic that's really neat. I actually followed them and didn't realize that was them uh, <laughs> until it was mentioned a little later on. Um, and uh, I can't remember what Ross was from. He does kind of like a channel with something to do with um, reviewing artwork, the artwork for games, the yeah, games and stuff like that. I haven't actually checked that out, but I'll definitely be looking around at that sometime soon because he was very good, yeah, as well. And um, John Perkis from Actual Lol, who is just a really good board game reviewer hmm. in general and really funny guy. Board game and royalty, John Perkis. Yes, uh, I think he was described as the rock star. The rock, yeah, the, the yeah. rock star of, of board games. <laughs> like board but. Um, it was hosted by Elaine from No Pun Included. It was a really funny show. I would really recommend yeah. it. Uh, whether they're sticking newspaper on one another to uh, make to... someone look like someone else. Yeah, that was. Really or yeah, uh, they, they, I like really liked the um, sausages round. The sausages. I thought it might be the sausages. Where round. basically they had to ask a question, and every answer had to be sausages, but you're not allowed to smile or laugh. Yes. So it'd be like, oh, so um, how did you get here this morning? Sausages, <laughs> and when you laugh, you're out. Yes, it, it was yeah, it was really enjoyable. So we won't spoil any more of that too much because I imagine they're probably gonna yeah, either yeah, upload probably. the video. Uh, I, they've already got a video of their one they did from Shucks last year, but I imagine they might put up this one as well. Uh, it's 100 percent worth it. They did a Q and A afterwards as well, where yeah, Efka, that was, that was really nice. Efka from No Pun Included joined them again. Really, a really nice show. We didn't get to go to every show we wanted to go and see, but yeah, we're glad no. we went and saw this one. But the, the bonus for me is that they threw a bag of Skittles into the crowd and I died in <laughs> a full cricket style. I, yeah. Like, what about your I've got a really, like, really bad back and genuinely always put myself out for a bag of Skittles. We were kind of, I looked <laughs> at him as he fell. 
and I yeah. genuinely was worried. <laughs> I could feel Daryl's eyes burning into the back of my head like, he's going to hurt himself again. Because you, you, you shot out and then it looked like you weren't going to get back up again and there was this scenario in my mind of me just watching you crumble on the floor and everyone looking at you and I'm like, oh my god, the embarrassment of him hurting himself. And just Thankfully, I'm an athlete. Well, you might have. <laughs> and I caught that bag of skin. It was a really good catch. I don't want to pick catch. myself up. I mean, you did say that was a great catch afterwards, to be fair. Yeah, I enjoyed I mean, that. Just going to say, it's not even just me. Everyone applauded. So it must have been, must have been, must have been good. Okay. I don't get round of applause very often. Usually booze. I'll take applause when it's for catching a bag of skittles. And like a true hero, I pass them round. You did. Yep, you did. You did. So, um, <laughs> what I like, hold on, is basically he took a couple of skittles and let me pour some in my hand. I went, I didn't take nearly enough. I yeah. just took some more out of my hand. <laughs> I, I poured like maybe six into my hand and then gave them to Daryl and then took them off him. And I was like, oh, I'll pass them around the room. Gave them to the girl in front of me. She promptly had some and passed them off. And then I, I looked at my hand and I've been eating them pretty. <laughs> Quickly, and I looked at like two in my hand. Looked in Dow's hand, he had like maybe twenty. And I was like, "Well, this isn't fair. I caught the skittles. <laughs> I'll take them back." Okay, so oh, honestly, one. I would check out Semi Co-op. Um, I followed them on Instagram. You can find them on Instagram at Semi, uh, semi Co-op. Um, I don't have any details, unfortunately, for Ross's stuff. I apologise for that. Uh, Actual lol. Follow them on YouTube. He does great videos. He mostly reviews smaller games, um, like party games and things like that, but reviews them really well. And of course, go and check out No Pun Included if you haven't already. I have no idea why someone who would be watching us wouldn't know who No Pun Included are, but uh, you never know. Might. You never know. Uh, yes, go and check those guys out because they are absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Um, okay, after that, uh, on the advice that we taken from Ooh, that, yes, we yes. went and checked out Team 3. John Perkis recommended the game. And he was right by us when we were there yeah, so playing We it. went over and we saw yeah. it and we were like, oh yeah, let's go try it out. Because he was recommended by John Perkis. And we went, walked past John Perkis to play it. Yeah, it was we, the there choice. was no interaction in any way we no. had with him. He it just was, happened to be It was almost as if he was like, I, I'm going to recommend this game. And I'm going to stand next to it and advertise it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we played it. It's... I actually would go so far as to say this was my game of the convention out of all the new games that were coming out. Cool. Um, Again, shamefully, they'd sold out of the allocated they had. Hands. It's, it's, the, it's a game I played, and I think my reaction immediately was, I'm going to buy this, and I'm going to give it to my in-laws, oh, and yeah. I'm going to watch <laughs> them suffer. You said that, I say, yeah. Love them to pieces, but I'd love to see them all play that. It seems like the sort of game where arguments will occur. So, the idea is... It's a three-player game, hence the name Team 3. Yeah. Uh, one player cannot speak, but has all the information. So in other words, your, your goal is to build a structure in a very specific way. The first player, like I said, has all the information, exactly what you're building, uh, where the pieces go, but they cannot speak. There is then the next person who cannot hear, but as such, the person who can't speak won't be, will basically be giving everything in hand gestures. Yeah. Uh, I'm making hand gestures like the L and the plus, but you're not going to be able to see that on the. If you're listening to the podcast, so by all means, go over and check out our YouTube channel for some sweet hand gestures. For some sweet hand gestures. Look at these. Oh, look at these moves. These fancy moves. <laughs> did you like a YMCA? Thing? I did do the YMCA. So, okay. <laughs> Just out of shot enough that I was like, is he doing my <laughs> Okay. And then the person yeah. who cannot hear has to explain to the person who cannot see. Yes how to build it, and that person is the person who's actually building the structure. Our first attempt at this went poorly. I, I didn't get my role, which at the time was the person who couldn't hear, that was explaining everything. I could not get the hang of it I at all. I would probably say you were sabotaged by the fact that I cannot make hand gestures that anyone would understand, because I was <laughs> doing stuff while the guy that was helping us was going like that, and I'm going like this, <laughs> so that's probably not helpful and at all. The third problem is that I felt so uncomfortable having my eyes closed around Daryl that I couldn't concentrate on what I was doing. <laughs> oh, come on, that's not fair. But hey, you there's, you once. there's <laughs> something, there's, this is a yeah. true underdog story here because we, we recomposed ourselves, we, we switched roles. We found our proper roles. We this this is my calling, I'm going pro. Yeah. And what was it, We because you've got three minutes to do it in and the guy ended up saying, wow, you just did that when we once we swapped roles, you did that in one minute thirty. 
in yeah. half the time. Like, so, so that's really good. Goes, yeah, cool. That was easy mode. This yeah. is what you can do in hard mode. We looked at them, we're just like, that's impossible. Human beings are not capable. Of that. <laughs> the best part was there was one where you showed that was 3D and you were like, I've got this. You built it and you went, I've done it. And you went, no. You just sort of looked yeah, at yourself like, so <laughs> I, 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 like, I have oh. my eyes open. I can see both the card, the pieces in front of me, what I need to do. And I still can't figure this out. And basically yeah. he was like, oh, you still only get three minutes back. You're like, right, cool. I was just there like, this, this is going to make some people suffer. So there was, <laughs> there was two, uh, two different versions, wasn't there, that you can actually integrate. And I remember him saying, which I think would be ridiculous, that at one point... So you there's have, one that's a five-player game, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so you basically have two people building these shapes and these weird things. Like, I imagine the chaos and that's going to be incredible. I'd love to play yeah. with that. So, okay, so that's everything we did, everything we played. Now let's talk about the stuff we didn't get to play, but we really like the look of, and may have to investigate more. So, Outer Rim was a game we wanted to play, but it looked like they were playing full games of. Which is fair, but it, yeah. So we didn't get a I chance. I think it's a game we're probably going to end up buying at some point I'm anyway, and trying to play yeah, through. Yeah, yeah, um, I'm, a, I'm a little bit disappointed, we talked to the Entoyment guys about this, that it's plas not plastic, cardboard cutouts of characters and not figures. That doesn't bother me so much. It does bother me, but... You're a miniatures guy. I'm a miniatures guy. Yeah. I would say I'm probably side of a being on this one. I would. It's not a massively expensive I, game. I would it is almost be tempted to buy the Fantasy though. Flight miniatures mm. just to have as tokens in this game. I would argue I think they wanted to make a more affordable game. Oh, and absolutely. They've done that by not having the miniatures in it. Yeah, but I don't think the miniatures would add anything to it. No, I think other not. than an aesthetic, yeah. aesthetically pleasing product. Uh, apart from that, I don't think it would add anything to the actual game as such. Oh, no, no, no. The game's unaffected. It's ju just how it looks. Isn't yeah. It? Um, I think another game we all decided oh, we really want to try when it one? comes out is Conquest. So, there yeah. was a... Uh, I, I, I won't use this word that often, but beautiful looking miniatures game. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, Conquest, Last Argument of the Kings. Maybe not the greatest name, but... Basically, what they've done is set up these amazing-looking scene pieces for it. So there was like storm uh, castle getting stormed by. What did we describe them as? Like sort of tyrannid kind then of. I like, imagine like a necromantic zombie army mixed with tyrannid, just absolutely dripping with yeah, blood. They were, yeah, they look they're so crazy. Just like arms like, for blade, blade blades for arms, arms yeah. and things like sort of that. spider-like, and then yeah. you had like normal sort of abominations. Uh, is how I describe yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. freakish abominations. Yes. So the starter set includes those two factions: the sort of human knights and um, the kind of freakish the abomination abominations. things. And I think all of us decided quite quickly that it looked interesting. Um, they also had some other units on show that apparently they're going to be releasing sort of steadily yeah. afterwards. One was the ones you really like, which is like the Northern Yeah, folk. so there's two more factions. So mm -hmm. the Norse are coming out in November, I think he said. Don't quote me on it. I think the Dwarves will come out in July. Dwarves, uh, it was later in the summer, July, but I yeah. don't remember exactly when. But, but the Dwarves look really cool and I really like them. And he really likes the Norse people and Steve really likes the kind of abomination type things. Yes. And the thing that we liked the most about it was the price point. Yes. So it's an expensive game to get in. I'm going to get looks from Steve. I think it's expensive to get into. However, the expense is sh overshadowed by the va sheer value for money. You're talking about expense versus value, yeah. aren't you? Yes. So it's expensive in that it's 70 quid for a starter set for your army. But you get 75 models? Yeah, 75 so models. It's less than a pound a model, which is which ridiculous. Amazing value, especially the quality. The quality, yeah. mm. quality, quality of the models is, is great. So, the one thing I will say is it's not out yet, but the thing I really liked about it, again, we didn't get to play it because we unfortunately did this whole yeah. time, but all the rules are fully available as a PDF on their website, so you can already start looking yeah. at the rules and see how it plays, and I, I mean, I've started looking at them and... I will say, this is a game where we've been bewitched by the look and the value. We yeah. don't know anything about how it yeah, plays. That's the thing. Absolutely. I've got, not got a clue. I like the, the pretty only, models. The only thing I will say format. is it was quite a biggish booth, so I'd imagine yes. there was some driving force behind that because I would imagine they It's not must. something I knew about before no. the expo. To yeah. have a bigger booth, I mean, some of the other places had smaller booths and they were much more well-known games, so I yeah. imagine there's something behind... Maybe they've just got a lot of money. I don't yeah. know. Because, <laughs> yeah, maybe. But uh, I think, again, they were painted, admittedly, but the, I would say that the actual quality of them, like the sprues and stuff, they looked akin to maybe the Warhammer. Yeah, they yeah. did look like GW level sprues. Yeah. And I was really to surprised. To be honest, they looked really good. And yeah. I think the the scale of the models was like very pleasing. Lent really nicely into the level of detail you get. Yes, mm. they but were ever so slightly bigger. There's mm. something that me and Daryl played with, 
which I think I will buy or use to make a model for Conquest if we end up doing Conquest, and that is the facial recognition software. Oh, oh yes. yes, yeah, I completely, completely forgot, forgot about that. Videos. So there's a booth uh, on that had like facial recognition, and the idea it, it's in beta at the moment. So over the next two weeks, they're practicing it with people from the expo. But the plan is, it takes your face, and you got to go. Uh, left, right, all up, down, back, forward. The full scan of your head. It puts your head on a model. Um, it wouldn't let me put my head on a model of the 1944 worst match captain. It did for me, and I surprisingly <laughs> looked quite dapper in that. Yeah, first so it like, actually suits. It's scarily, it suited you more than I any think it's because of my parting on my hair. <laughs> basically, it captured my parting almost to perfection, and to the point where it was so 3D. But I didn't look great as an orc, I didn't look great as a bard, but I definitely looked good as a soldier. You <laughs> looked good at a, at, as a World War II German officer. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the mod, there's a vi there's like a Viking King model, which yeah. Yeah. I tried, and there's some Warhammer-esque models, like 40k-esque models, so which I, I also tried. My, you thought the scaling was off. My, yeah, yeah, my only issue yeah. I had with it, I thought the heads were a bit too big, but it's possible I have an enormous head, <laughs> and I was a bit too close to the camera. It so did kind of. Give hey, you can see it in now. You can judge for yourself. Yeah, I mean, look at my normal size head compared to these two. Daryl is no closer behemoths. to the camera. <laughs> Daryl is no closer. Now he's close to the camera. But look, look at the size of the heads. I, I'm just saying. We're not going to be able to comment below if you think <laughs> I have a massive head. <laughs> I think your head is beautiful and you should not listen to the criticism of other lesser Bigger is better. <laughs> um, we no. want full scale bullying of Daryl in the comments. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Look at that tiny man. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't even. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, yeah. As, a, as a thing, I think my own, my, the only thing I had as a negative was it looked like the scaling was off. As I say, it's in beta. Yes. In the next two weeks, they're going to contact people and say if they want models so made for that beta. And then in two months' time, they're rolling it out full scale. That's the plan. Two months' time, they're rolling it out full scale. A couple of people. things that I found quite interesting about it, but a few things actually. One was um, the ease of the app. I think the app, yeah. admittedly, it, it wasn't running around because of the Wi Fi, but it was working really well. Uh, there was the price point twenty pounds. Twenty pounds for the basic miniature, printed on a miniature. That was like a thirty millimeter. Yeah, figure as well, wasn't it? You Even the forty. I think, I think she said forty to me. Yeah. And, and yeah. Very, yeah. It was played on. Um, uh, what did they say? Medical grade resin, I think it was. I didn't. Know oh, that, she, basically, okay. she was trying to sell me. She said uh, medical grade resin, so it gives it a bit more of a finer detail. But you could choose like metal. You could choose forty millimeter. You could choose fifty millimeter. You could yeah. choose busts. You could choose um, stuff on horses. You know, there was loads of options. The thing they were saying, what I really and it like, wasn't even all the options. No, that was it. It was like maybe a half. They said they were, were going to have like two hundred and fifty, maybe three hundred different models. They had some models yeah. there painted of the. What a couple of the devs' heads, which looked really good. And like there, were, there was a point I was just holding up the model and I was looking at this bike yeah. and looking at the model of him. I'm like, it just looks okay. it's so good. Like, like, there was one of, did you see the one of the like, horse? Yeah, yeah. It was really. I mean, again, it was really tiny figure, but it was perfect. The only negative thing I've got to say about this, other than obviously the head size, is it's only for the very higher tier end. Uh, iPhones. Yeah. So, so it requires the most modern tech to run yeah. the 3D camera set. Because apparently they, he was saying that the actual front of the camera is like a true HD camera for the actual face and it's the only thing that can properly capture your face in such a nice detail that you can transfer. So it was iPhone X, iPhone XX, all that kind of new stuff. So that's the only issue you will need to have access to one of bearing in mind that we don't have that phone. No. But because we scanned it in at the Xbox, we now have our face. I have file. a picture of my face that I can use. Sadly, it's not the picture I tried initially, which was, <laughs> but it is my face. It was a shame because that looked great, apart from the fact that it had completely removed the back of your head. Yeah, I've been I can't scout like that. Because, because yeah. I was like, it's got a weird crater coming out of it. You can like put green stuff to make some weird the bottom. It just scalped me. It, it, it has almost revenge for not taking it seriously. <laughs> it was a nice idea, I think. Yeah, maybe it's a really nice idea. Line, and it's the it sort right. of thing that I feel like in future could be much more prevalent. Yeah. Especially if really you want to do like characters for yeah. D D, like your yes. own personal characters. That, that's what the that is what I wanted was. to use it for. That was the, the thing I thought. If we ever do like a proper RPG campaign, I, where I want figure, yeah. characters. Yeah, and I want to have the guys' faces. I'm. I will steal their likeness. 
true. I'm looking forward to at some point maybe there being custom size, more sci-fi towards Legion figures. I'd love some troops of like stormtroopers. That would be difficult with our faces on. What I would actually without really like, licensing that would be very difficult. They very had difficult. a what? couple of figures that were sort of sci-fi. -y. Yes, and so I it's made to look kind of like. Yes. It. What so I would like to be able to do is to be able to order individual heads. Yes. So you could order like a sprue of five heads. You could scan oh, in five yeah. people, and you could order heads to fit certain scale models. So yeah, and you could like. I want to make a Death Watch squad in 40k, and I want to put me, Steve, Andy, Daryl, Phil, other people I know, or just heads on it. All of them as you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah. or loads of me. Like, ah, <laughs> it's a terrifying. Yeah, just a gene stealer cult, but it's it's just a me cult. <laughs> <laughs> horrible things happen to each face. No, no, just my face. It's oh, a horrible you're not even a green body. No, no, I just I I want <laughs> an almost gene stealer, and it's just like. <laughs> oh no! Well, you can't have like stuff going no, on you. No, uh, I want a really sinister trained warrior like ah, instead of the ah, face. It's just hello. Oh. Well. <laughs> anyway, uh, before we move on to just showing off what else we bought there, I just want to mention one last game, uh, which was Mega City Oceania. Yeah, that's. So I really cool. like the look of that. Which oh. I'm ashamed we didn't get to play. There was one more thing. I'll just explain this real quick. Yes, go go go. Um, so Mega City Oceania. Uh, it looks like a really interesting game where you're both building a city, but it's also a dexterity game. Mm -hmm. So you're quite literally building your city with your hands, and you kind of like are having to move it into other locations, just hoping that your city just doesn't topple over. Mm. Look really, really interesting. Look like something I really wanted to try and play, I'm but sure. sadly we Again, just never got to get to the it table. It was busy. It was popular. Yes, it was. But yeah. Anyway, sorry. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys have covered this at all, but it was that Western. Uh, miniatures game. Oh, oh I, uh, I, this. I already own the two-player starts. I of think we were quite impressed with this. Um, we were quite impressed. I with think it. it's worth noting that me and Steve have been looking for, at Wild West Exodus a lot. Yeah. Not actively, but passively. For me, I've, I've still been looking play, at it, put it that way. Five years. I've got. I've, I've got the box. At it. I've got the box. I've glued the miniatures all together. I've just never gone around to playing it. Really, but yeah, so I, I would be interested to. Um, I think it's because it had some interesting factions, and I think there was a nice world West steampunk kind of crossover thing. And the again, they had, it's, I'm a sucker for scenery. When they had the nice little scenery yeah. setup, it looked like it could be a really small scale, sort of tiny little game you could play. Yeah. I remember what I really liked. There was a scenery oh, manufacturer, yes. and I can't remember the name. It it's was Tier. Tier, yeah, Tier. Tier. Tier, Tier designs. As in, like the Nordic God. Yeah, yeah. Um, they had a crashed star destroyer uh, terrain piece that's eighty-five pounds. The amount of value you get out of that—it's yeah. huge. It's, it's uh, big. <laughs> so <laughs> it, like, it, it's an actual. So so it's like a raider yeah, style raider star now. destroyer. So it's um, like the small one, not a massive one. That'd be impossible. But it, it's big. It's for eighty-five quid. You get so much terrain, and you needn't put it out like a star destroyer. You can put it out how you no, want. No, that was a nice part. It was all separate, so you could. It was modular. Essentially, yeah, they yeah. had some really nice. The one I kind of like sort of frothed over a little bit was um, they had this sort of interior of the star destroyer. Uh, not star destroyer, the Death Star. Yeah. So they basically had the power generator rooms, uh, sort of cells almost. You again, the walls can be arranged in any shape, fashion. All the parts kind of come apart. I just love the fact for Legion and anything like that, you could just yeah. make some really nice it doesn't, interior. Doesn't just stop at Legion. It's very good sci-fi ones. Yeah, they did some um, other not sci-fi stuff. They did some fantasy stuff. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. and Necromunda. So there's a lot of stuff they do. So I'd recommend looking at their website. The value seems like it's really good. Looks yes. like you get a lot for your money. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, we've been going on for a while, so we'll really quickly move on to just showing you some of the stuff that we actually bought, uh, that we haven't shown you already. The broke the um, Again, uh, this probably is going to be hard for us to really describe uh, um, our SoundCloud podcast listeners, so you may possibly want to check this out on YouTube. We'll still do our best. But anyway, let's... A box. Oh, nice. <laughs> Let us start oh my with... Goodness, this box has pictures on. What go a beautiful go. box! We are starting off with Sorcerer, which is a oh. card building game. Uh, like a, it sort of looks like it's a deck building game with a bit of a fancy-ish kind of theme. I think there's dice involved as well. I believe what it is is oh. you're rather than fighting one another, you're kind of trying to area control almost. There's okay. usually like four areas on the board. And again, it's just got a few really nice pieces to it. Again, we're going to have a look at this at some point. Hopefully, we'll be able to 
yeah, hopefully we'll be able to report on it soon. I'm seeing Egyptian size flip it. <laughs> there are also yeah. some uh, yeah. dice. Uh, so obviously you're going to be wrong. There's one really, really cool looking dice here as well. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, no, oh no, sorry. No, there's uh, like oh, uh, that, really chunky D12, D8. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's a D8. Um, yeah, uh, I don't really know too much about this game. It's basically been sold to me on its art style. Like Which I say, I've seen one or two things. things. Good. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just very much looking forward to trying it. And you'll probably see some stuff on these games at some point soon. Hopefully. Uh, it's, like I say, it's got a very kind of darkish kind of theme. I'm like, yeah, I'm liking a kind of, uh, yeah, sort of a cult kind of feel to it. Yeah. It's very nice. I don't know. It's almost like a Jack the Ripper style. Yeah, well, I mean, almost. not like in actual, but it's like, it's like old style London. Yeah, yeah, sure. I think that's what a lot of the a lot of the locations when you look in them. I think three of them are all London, and there's one more for the underground or something like that. But yeah, um, fits really well in the box. <laughs> do you know what? That's uh, very much the theming of a lot of these games that we've bought. The inserts for them are amazing. Yeah, it's a really good. I insert. really appreciate when games do this. Okay. Um, this probably doesn't need too much explaining, but we all bought a little bit of the new Keyforge. Yes. Which came out. So, I mean, me and Daryl have talked numerous times about how much yes. we like this game. Uh, we're trying to bring Ian on board a bit. He bought a deck. He bought I'm going to say something controversial here. I actually regret buying the Keyforge deck. Wow, really? Over the Lightseekers. Wow, okay. So, I will always say that I really like the fact that this uh, unique deck, but I would honestly say I had more fun playing Lightseekers than I did when we had a little quick game on Keyforge. Yeah. Which is, you know, I'm not, I don't know if it's just because it's, it's obviously the same as it was, it's still a unique deck, it's just a new sort of series of them, but I think there was something about Lightseekers that was just a bit more charming. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, can, I can see that. And I, I think I like the way it played a bit I think better. Yeah. It, it themes a lot better. Just I, I just yeah. bought I'm to my feel first what you think. Keyforge deck to mm. play against the guys, and it's sort of like a, okay, if I enjoy this, I will maybe then continue. I'll consider continuing Keyforge. And I ended up putting myself in a position where I kind of roundly beat Daryl hands down. I think you'll accept that. Yeah, you control, you're very, your deck was my very control My deck was very good. But I spent the whole time going, oh, I, I, no interest. It dragged in. on. Again, why, it drags. why does the Martians, why are they with these Brognar boys? I, I didn't get, I, didn't, I don't like the theme. It's yeah. as simple as that. I can't. Well, like, it's I hard. Can't. It, it almost has no theme, does it? By, yeah. by putting too much in that doesn't connect with one another, it kind of almost negates it. With, without that, I'm going to call it creative synergy. Yeah, rather sure. rather Very than much. rather than actual like game synergy, because the the deck itself had great synergy. Like, like I could do lots of things and it worked really well. Mm. Yeah, but actual like the way the the houses interact with each other, I'm just not interested. It just didn't do it for me. May I ask you a question? No. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask it anyway. Yeah. Would you have preferred if it was just a Mars deck or just a such and such deck? Yes. Because you yeah, seem to use one fa when you get one faction, say like Mars, you had some really good cards. I cannot remember what they were, but they were doing really well stuff with the mothership stuff and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah, so it was like a would mother you... gun card. Which, that was it, yeah. But all the Mars cards I had in my hand, it did damage. So when I realised Daryl started getting big, I started spending my other cards and hoarding my Mars cards. Played two mother guns, just went pew, pew, and just took out all of this so, stuff. So yeah, realistically, if they did split them into one house per. Yeah, you I think what them. what it would take for me to enjoy Keyforge is, and it's not going to happen because it's just against the nature of how it works. I'm not opposed to the idea of playing a card game where I don't have to buy all the individual cards on eBay to get a competitive deck. I hate it, I hate that as a concept. But I don't like the idea. I'm opening a pack and I've got no idea what I've got. I don't mind it being a kind of rubbishy deck. What I do mind is looking at it and thinking none of this stuff interacts in a in a way that makes sense to me. So would you That's like it more? If say they released a few things where they say gave you the three factions that could be involved in it, and then they give you a random assortment of cards from those three factions to make a deck, yes. I know that's never going to happen because of the way it's uh, printed. Yeah, I know. But if if it went, this is a deck that will involve Brobnar, Shadows, and the, what's the beast one called? Uh, that is Wild Untamed. Untamed. Oh, Untamed. 
and it said the, the, the thing behind this deck is this and it had like a, a gentle theme yeah I'd, I'd buy that because I'd enjoy the theme and yes it's not even that I don't enjoy enjoy I don't even enjoy playing Keyforge that much either like I like I, I won it and still and there was a point about halfway through and I, I just got my second key and I just turned to Steve and I went I kind of just wish this would be over that's never a good sign. Like I just turned to him, I was like, "This is dragging too long," and like without sounding rude to Daryl, I was in a position of dominance. Like I was winning, and the, the deck was working, and I still turned and went, "I I'm done. done." I'm like, honestly, if Daryl conceded right now or accepted me conceding right now, uh, that would count that as a blessing. I don't. Know, mate, I just don't like Keyforge that much. Yeah. I think that I don't think. I've, got a problem with other people enjoying Keyforge, but I'm not that fast. I do enjoy it, but I just think now that the, I don't know, maybe it's just because those other things work in a way that, again, it's the collectible part of it I'm not so keen on, but the fact yeah. that it works differently. This is the thing, we, we've got a collectible card game that we've started, well, the, the Light Seekers game, and although it's a collectible card game, we're not treating it as a collectible card game, we're treating it in the same way you treat a Keyforge deck, in that there's just cards and you can use them. But the game plays so much better because we're not planning on taking it to tournaments. We're not planning on taking on people who are going to spend too much time and too much money making the decks undefeatable. There's always going to be that level of balance, and I think we're going to enjoy it a lot more. Yeah. Mm. 100%. Okay. All right. Let's have a look at what else we got. Controversial. Okay. Controversial. This is two games that kind of become three games so you have Century Eastern Wonders and Century Spice Road these are not new games by any stretch of the imagination but they're ones that I have not played yet and I'm quite interested by I'm interested to see the way that two completely different games meld together into one so <laughs> I believe oh, Spice Road here. is kind of uh, Kind of like Splendor, I hold think. On. Hold on, has that got metal coins? It has metal coins in there. The components look great. Oh, my God, I'm sorry. I'm so, sorry. Yeah. Little cups. I'm you've sorry. Got your little cups, your coins, you've got your four different spices, and then you've got your big tarot sized cards. So, uh, yeah, it, it looks interesting as a game on its own. I think the artwork's very nice. Yep, yeah, it is. Uh, it's nice to have a game that moves away from that such it. things as fantasy things. That is all the rules, so it looks so like it's going to be relatively really just simple. One side, and the other side. That's yeah, it. a double-sided piece of cardboard, and it's the same for Eastern Wonders as well, uh, which Ian is trying to open. Again, you've got your nice cups, you've got a lot of nice models, no metal coins in that one, unfortunately. But you have, all of a sudden, uh, you've gone from a card game, which is Spice Road, into what is a tile based game where you're creating trade routes I believe so is it in a way the same as you sort of kind of you, so you get your spice and then you use your trade routes to try and get your spice through the trade routes is this what so I don't know okay <laughs> yeah, I, I have not played we, we will play that we back opened it. them um, it's never going back in is it no uh, it Ow. looks interesting. It looks very interesting. The third game is out this year, and all three games are going to be put together with one another, yes. um, creating an entirely new game. So essentially, you own three games, but what you actually have is five. Okay. Although I don't know whether there's then going to be separate games that do the third box with just Spice Road or just Eastern Wonders. I don't know. It'd be but interesting to see what happens. It's interesting to see how they all link together. Mm what comes out of it in that way and Very which nice one's game. the best whether each one is good in its own right or whether i don't know it's it's an it, interesting concept it's really interesting it's not a game i know anything about no i think also i wanted something that was just a bit far away from fantasy dungeon crawling things like that i i like these games as well and yeah. i quite i'm quite happy that i've got more of them in my collection now <laughs> okay uh this one, cool to adventure, going straight back to fantasy driven <laughs> stuff. I think I'm done with fantasy. I'm, I'm back to fantasy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so this one I bought sheerly because one, it looks interesting, and two, it's made by the same people who made Boss Monster, which I hate. I really do not like Boss Monster at all. 
I want to see if they can change my mind on this one. I've forgotten it's designed by Chris and Johnny O'Neill. So, yeah, we will see with that again. It has lots of really nice components to it. I like the little white, um, kind of like almost runes. Yep, you've got your runes, but it's mostly a card driven game where you're basically writing your own hero story. Oh, look at that! They have um, <laughs> an advertisement for Boss Monster, say, which yeah. I'm going to hold against it. Um, and unearth, by the so way. yeah, essentially the game's played over three acts where you're trying to tell the story of your hero and trying to achieve the destiny of that hero. Uh, you can corrupt your hero, so there's a corruption deck as well as kind of like a more oh, I benevolent know. deck, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, it looks like there's a co-op mode in it as well, okay. which seems rather interesting, but oh, I don't like have... Yeah. Sorry? I like the look of the unearth game. Oh, I've not really looked into it too much. Like I said, we've, we we've really we got back very, very late last night, yeah. and I've pretty much spent all morning getting all these games ready to be able to show on this little video. You beautiful so people out there. I've not had very much time to really read into them or anything like that. But yeah. Okay, what what I love is it's completely off you. But you can, like, the, the, this table is huge, by the way, guys. Is and in the corner, it's slowly getting invaded by what is to only be described as a lot of games. <laughs> We've got two more to go. Uh, next up, we have Comanauts, which honestly, I have heard very mixed things about this game, and I kind of want to try it for myself. I like the idea of playing off of a book. I've never played um, Stuff Fables or what was the other one? Uh, Near or Far? I think they're not made by the same company. Uh, Stuff Fables, I believe, is made by Plat Hat Games okay. and it follows a pretty oh, wow. much similar system to it. Big boy book. Uh, it's a bit more adult, Ooh. this one, I think, compared to Stuff Fables. Um, this is the one game which doesn't have a very good insert. It's kind of just all in there and a bit of a schmoz. A schmoz? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, kind of all stuffed in there together. Uh, Near and Far is a completely different game, but they're games which are played off the book. So there's a book that opens up, it actually has the game board in there, and you move your pieces across it. So on the left hand side, it's usually an illustration or a board of some sort. That's quite and nice. then, yeah, you're playing your characters across that, and then moving through it almost like a choose your own adventure book. So, yeah, that one really piqued my interest more than anything <laughs> else. Uh, yeah, I did a bit. Uh, but yeah. Uh, one last one to go to really close out this video slash podcast. Bring on the big way. Oh dear, I might put out my back doing this. Oh, we have Escape Plan, which just looks, in I, I just love the theme of this. So the idea is you have all just robbed a bank. Nice. You've had a couple of days to uh, kind of like, <laughs> to kind of like go into way. hiding and stuff like that and let everything calm down before trying to escape the city but they have caught on to you and now you're all going to have to go your separate ways except you've already hidden the money and it's a race to go and retrieve the money and then escape the city safely it's unclear yet whether this is a semi-cooperative game or purely uh, a competitive game because uh, it seems to suggest things like you kind of have to cooperate still otherwise the city can just go on a complete lockdown and completely close up again it's got a really nice insert to it I love the, um, the, the parts of the boards are kind of like the embedded so you can actually stick components in yeah them. I will say as well the version that I've bought is a uh, deluxe edition that actually came with a few oh, like for example key! These metal keys here, you won't get those in the regular version of the game. You need the upgrade pack in order to get those. So there are a couple of components to this game which you won't necessarily see otherwise. Okay, um, on that, I think we're going to wrap this up. Uh, that's all right, just leave that out for now. I'll sort it all out in a moment. Um, <laughs> I'm done. I want to thank the guys over at the UK Game Expo and yeah. all the volunteers that helped make it a great event because they were absolutely brilliant. All the demonstrators were absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Everyone I've mentioned before, Robbie Munn at, uh, at uh, Peculiarity Games, Actual Lol, uh, Semi Co-op, no pun included, all these guys, uh, I would thoroughly recommend going and checking out. Um, we had an awesome time. Great time. 
Brilliant. It's really, I'm really good. I'm waking up at half four in the morning to get there. Which there was that. Woke up at half four. I woke up at half four. I That's woke not up at half four. That is not on. What? I woke up at four because I knew I'd be late. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and even then, I was late. Knowing that Daryl's <laughs> going to pick me up at five, I wake up at half four thinking. This is going to be half an hour too soon because Daryl will be late. <laughs> uh, actually, for it, once, guys, just because I put this on record, I actually was perfectly on time. Daryl has never been more on time. Yeah, more Very. on time. So nice. all that, nice. and uh, I believe we had two trouser malfunctions. Oh, uh, one yeah, more severe so than good. the other. That was so good. One luckily happened at the beginning so, of the trip. The so moment funny. I step out my door at like just, five, just, five, just five, gone five like in the it. morning or just before five in the morning. Um, I step out the door and my shorts just rip in half. <laughs> so funny. Like in a like a, not even like the cro it's like the pocket. Yeah. So the pocket where it attaches to the line but normal part of the shorts just rips. And I just went down and I was like, excellent, so now I'm gonna have to go change. So I go dump my stuff in the car and go, my shorts are ripped, I'll be right back. And then Perfect. later, later on, on I went to Shorts Mark Two, <laughs> got in the car and we went, and then later on you had the same so, problem. So my malfunction actually came through a you comedy went to of uh, of you went to pick things up, happening. What was it? So what happened was the oh, bag right. which uh, I think it was the bag which had uh, uh, yeah, um, oh, the the dungeon one. Uh, uh, yeah, is that called, catacombs. Man? Catacombs. Yeah. My bag which was carrying it's catacombs good, actually gave way and broke. So the handle completely snapped. Yeah. The game falls on the floor. I go to pick it up and my trousers rip. Uh, I then stand up. And my wallet opens up, and money yeah. goes everywhere. <laughs> so, so it was just sick. it was just moment after moment after moment. And, then and throughout the day, we heard this. <laughs> yeah, it slowly started ripping you, more and more. So it actually started off as not too bad no, of a rip, really. Like, um, you really took that in your stride later on because you've just completely there, there was a sitting point legs I apart, to Steve like, and I just saw <laughs> what is what's that. What can I just see between Steve's legs? <laughs> and it just the rip had gone so far up. That it, I just I could see Steve's underwear and I was just like, yeah, Steve's got something on his crotch, but I don't really know what it was. It was just the <laughs> lack of shorts, <laughs> is what I could see. Yeah, uh, that was fun. Anyway, <laughs> once again, thank you to everyone involved at the UK Games Expo. We had a fantastic time, and hopefully you will hear from us again soon. Don't forget to check out www.everybodydice.com or just everybodydice.com. I always put in the extra www. <laughs> Oh. You can follow us on Twitter at Everybody Dice, on Instagram at Everybody Dice Show, and also if you've been listening to the podcast, by all means go and check up our check out our YouTube channel. How do you contact us? Uh, you can contact us uh, if you have a question on the podcast, uh, mailbag at everybodydice.com, or if you have any general inquiries or anything like that, or once again, send me sound audio files of you screeching. That will be on the mailbag, I believe. Yeah. Mailbag at everybodydice.com. Uh, Don't forget the hate on Daryl. And the hate on Daryl. 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 Tiny head. <laughs> with his small tiny head. Please Pretty head boy. That in the comments. Okay, thank you very much. Bye. 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 Bye.